Today we've got a great revenge story that takes place in a video game. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, revenge on rude waiter. I just bought a hotel room and was informed the room came with free breakfast for two. I came downstairs in the morning, and as soon as I entered the breakfast area, the server gives me a dirty look and literally yelled, what do you want? I told him about the comped breakfast and he said I had to leave without explaining I needed a coupon that came with the key card for the room. After I found this out from the front desk, I came back and gave him the coupon. He then said he wouldn't serve me because there needed to be two people. Again, I had to leave to get my brother and come back. He then proceeds to take our order. One breakfast for me and one breakfast to go, so my brother could go back to sleep. My brother leaves. The server then proceeds to not even offer me water or check on me at all while attending to the only other people in the breakfast area sitting right in front of me. Finally, someone else brings up my food. I eat. When it comes time to leave a tip, I write a big fat zero on the check and proceed to walk over to the food runner that bring me my food and hand him a $20 bill. The look on this rude server's face is priceless. I don't know if like this server is part of the people who own the place or something, but I don't know why they're acting with such disgust. I mean, what are they expecting to happen? You treat somebody like that who's dining at your place and you're not really setting yourself up in pole position to get a tip. At least not a good one. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, I never said it was my truck. I live in a city, and to save money, I don't own a car. Sometimes it's inconvenient, but mostly the subway and buses get me where I need to go. For groceries, there's a big grocery chain just a few blocks away. So I'm leaving the grocery one day, a bag in my arm and another in a small backpack. I'm walking through the parking lot on the way home and this lady steps out in front of me and starts yelling that I parked my truck too close to her car. I look next to her and this little orange hatchback is parked with the driver's side right up against the white line. Next to it is a large white pickup with its passenger side also right up against the white line. Each vehicle was within its proper spot but with little more than the width of the line painted on the pavement separating them. As I'm looking at the situation and trying to figure out what's going on, this woman is yelling at me calling me a short little crap and demanding I move my truck. Now I know I'm short, I've been teased about it enough, no big deal. I'm also aware when some bully is having a tough day and wants to abuse someone, they don't tend to challenge the biggest dude around, they pick someone who looks easier to abuse. Still, every now and then I don't have the patience for such nonsense, I decide to push back. I know it wasn't my truck, but I wasn't going to tell her that. So I said, I'll park however I like and I'm not moving that truck. She kept yelling and mocking me and I continued to refuse to move that truck. Anyhow, while this is happening, a dude walks past us, tosses something in the back of the truck, climbs in and starts to pull out. She does a double take and seems lost for words. As the truck pulls away, I say, I never said it was my truck. Then I continue on my way through the parking lot, headed home, just to get some actual whiplash from whipping their head back and forth trying to figure out what just went on. Our next story is, I got revenge from my class teacher because he spread rumors about me. I was 16 year old female at that time, my class teacher is 28 year old male, I had three boys in my friend group, I'm the only girl, so I had every information about what they're going to do, what they will do in the future and what they are currently doing. I was the first one our teacher questions after any bratty thing they do. So my friends confronted him and told him not to question me every time after they've done anything because I don't know anything about what they do. I was always standing alone with all the boys and our male class teacher when something happened and my friends told him that it's not okay for a girl to stand alone with a bunch of boys in the classroom. It was awkward for real because there were like 15 males and I'm the only female there. Our class teacher hated me, but he couldn't do anything because I had the best marks in our class. I will always be the first, even though I did some crazy things. So he thought it would be a good idea to make a rumor about me. He wrongly accused me for having a relationship with one of my friends. Remember, relationships are not allowed in schools in my country. That boy had a little keychain that I gifted him on his birthday. He told principal about that as his proof and also told them that I always hung out with him. We were both summoned to the office. My friend told principal that he doesn't even see me as a girl. Same for me, I don't even see him as a man. 
And also, I told the principal that he is not the only one that has a keychain. My other two friends have the same keychain in different colors too. I also had three gifts from each one of them too. He decided to summon the other two friends to the office too. It was so freaking embarrassing. Some even assumed that I'm in a relationship with all of them. We told our class teacher to stop doing that. We thought it was over, but he decided to inform this to our house. Jokes on him, my dad is friends with my friend's dad. I told him everything. The way he questions me every time when the boys do something, and the way he complained to the principal, everything. This was not his first time doing something like that. Well, my dad didn't take it good. He was furious. He was complaining to school about this. After some time, our class teacher had to change schools. He made sure that our teacher will transfer somewhere else. I didn't even tell him to stop. He was kind enough to not ruin his job. Many students were glad about that because I'm not the only victim. He even accused some friends for having a homosexual relationship too, even though they weren't. He never saw any friendship normal. I'm still friends with those three boys. Two of them are married now. One is in a serious relationship. I mean, I understand that like teenagers have like the hormones going or whatnot, but you can't just assume like if they show any sign of friendship that they're clearly just sneaking around together. I mean, I suppose sometimes you can probably make a guess, but this guy's radar was just completely broken. Or maybe it was the sick kind of thing where they just enjoyed trying to get all these kids in trouble for no reason. This next story is bananas duct taped to co-workers desk. Right after college, I worked in the marketing department for an NBA team, and one of the team's secretaries was an obnoxious middle-aged woman, and she would sit at her desk in the lobby all day and stuff her face with snacks from the break room and was generally unpleasant to all our co-workers. Sometimes I would find my lunch that I kept in the employee fridge half-eaten or things missing from it. One day I walked into the break room and saw her swapping her unripe green banana for my ripe banana I had packed for lunch. I never mentioned it to her and did this instead. Over the next couple of weeks, I would bring about 10 extra bananas into work with me and I would duct tape them to the bottom of her desk. After about three weeks, her area and the entire lobby started to smell really bad from the rotting bananas. She had no idea what the smell was and it drove her absolutely insane. She would have the maintenance guys come and check the air vents insisting something died in them. She even freaked out at the janitor saying he didn't do a good enough job cleaning. I worked for the team for about six months after I placed the bananas and she never figured it out. Fast forward two years and I ran into my former supervisor from the team at a bar. We were talking and he told me that a few months after I left, the janitor found a bunch of bananas under the secretary's desk. I filled him in on my little scheme and we had a great laugh. The next day I sent him a picture of me with a banana in my hand. He framed it and put it in the break room and it still hangs there to this day. I mean, I'm glad that they had a positive reaction to this because I feel like, former supervisor or not, you're not currently working for them still. Finding out that you were taping bananas underneath someone's desk in a place that is probably shared by multiple people. I mean, it just sounds like Roach Central. It sounds like Nat Central or Rat Central. I suppose as long as you weren't inviting the pestilence into the workplace, it's okay. Our next story is High Beams in My Mirror. I had a drop off in a complex last night. It was rainy, dark and not easy to see and it was my first time in this complex. It had a long driveway and this car was behind me with its brights on making my night just that much harder. The guy must have lived there and knew every turn and exactly where he needed to go and was kind of impatient. Make my life hard? I'm going to a crawl and going to the center of the roadway so you can't get by. I'm taking my time. Screw you and your brights in my mirror. Had you not had your brights on, I'd just pull over and let you pass and get you out of my hair. But now, it's going to take you that much longer to get home. Eat it, sucker. I feel like there's a good amount of people that in traffic have had something similar go on. You know, you see some jerk or somebody's tailgating you, and instead of speeding up which they want you to do, you just kind of get back at them and you just slow down. You know, maybe go a few under. You got nowhere to go right away. Our next story is, my ex ruined my Christmas, so I ruined his birthday. This was several years back, and I was a dumb teenager, but I would totally do it again. I was dating this guy that I thought was really, really awesome. 
What I didn't know is that he was hiding a secret. What secret? Turned out he was gay and decided not to tell me. Just for clarification, I have no problem with anybody being gay. My problem was that he chose not to tell me, even though he knew before we started talking and played with my feelings. I had to find out through somebody else which was utterly disgusting. This had to happen right around Christmas that year, so I was not in a celebratory mood. What did I do? Turns out I was friends with the guy my ex ended up going to. I sat around and waited until it was my ex's birthday, and then I told his new boyfriend exactly what he did to me. Guess who ended up getting unceremoniously dumped on their birthday? Moral of the story, don't screw with my feelings and definitely don't lie to me. Once I find out, it's not pretty. OP definitely should not have been lied to, but at the same time, I guess it really depends personally what the circumstances were around that. Like, were they completely out? Are they actually just only gay? I'm just going to assume it was a pretty blatant lie to OP and that it's not even like something they were really trying to hide for OP to feel this way. This next story is, keep using my air hose? Not anymore. I'm a mechanic. I like my tools where I freaking keep them. Okay, now that that's clear, and excuse my grammar, I'm a heathen and kind of tipsy, but this was funny. We have no air hose reels anywhere in this factory. It sucked. Place was a crap show. I had my own air hoses. A few nut rounders like to grab my air hose and just leave it around. Ugh. It came to a point where it was wrapped up in a low profile electric pallet jack. I was not happy, but I made another one with a fun little trick. I stuck a ball bearing in the hose so you get maybe 3-4 to four seconds of air if it's all the way on the other end, or a quick spritz of freak all. This was absolutely delightful to watch them get upset as freak and then leave it all pudged off on the ground. Always would go and coil it back up and hang it next to my box. Did this for a while, throw them off, cue petty and no, not Richard. If you've ever taken apart a good skookum wheel bearing, you know those rolling elements are hard as crap and very magnetic. I like magnets. I happen to come across a magnetically coupled air cylinder with these astonishingly strong magnets years ago, and I cut up one and then put it in the glove of my right hand. I can now use the air hose no one could use. Holy crap, the three guys who were the problem lost their dang minds. I thought it was funny, and they actually did learn tool accountability from that lesson. Old guys knew what was up, but kept quiet. OP looks like they just have this innate hidden talent to somehow get this troublesome equipment to work. Like OP's just got the silk touch for that air hose. Every guy in the factory says that air hose is horrible, but yet here you are using it like nothing's wrong. How are you doing that? This next story is Sweet Revenge. My roommate's partner is the absolute worst and I've been struggling dealing with them for two years now. They're almost never at their own home and instead just stay at ours for months at a time. The worst parts are that they never clean up after themselves and act like the flat is theirs constantly. The first birthday I lived here, they snuck into my room and then tried to kick me out without my roommate's permission because they didn't like what they found there. The other day they were shouting at their roommate about me walking around in the flat in a very skimpy bra. I'd literally run into the kitchen to grab a clean shirt from the drying rack. After spending every day for the last few months picking up and cleaning their dirty dishes, literally having to pull wrappers out of half-eaten food, and throwing away trash they've just dropped on the floor or counters and left, I talked to my roommate and said if her partner is going to stay here this long, then they have to contribute to cleaning up the flat or at least clean up after themselves. Then I went out for the day. I came back home to the partner sitting in a mostly clean kitchen with a dishwasher running and baking a cake. A win for me. Normally when they did something like this there'd be dishes and trash everywhere. Also the partner is blinking me and not saying a word when I'm around. Another win. A couple of hours later, roommate comes into my room asking if I want a cake so sweet it makes you sick. I try a bit and it's an aggressively sweet funfetti cake that tastes like cotton candy but if you have something with it bitter like black coffee, it's actually really nice. Roommate and her partner hate anything bitter, so now my roommate's crappy partner is having to sit there while I eat the cake they lovingly baked and cleaned up after for the person they're seething at. Best petty win. I mean, you can eat it with coffee, sure it offsets it, but like... If the cake is that sweet to the point where it's almost unbearable without covering it up with coffee, 
I don't know, in my good conscience, if I'd feel okay having more than just kind of like a bit of it. I mean, how many cc's of sugar do I want to directly inject into my stomach? Our next story is, clean up after your fireworks display. Last night, neighbors from the next street over came outside my flat, as it's the highest point in the area, and had themselves a firework party at midnight. Wasn't impressed with it as it was too loud for my pet, but they weren't breaking the law so couldn't stop them. Trouble is, they finished after 20 minutes and went home, leaving all their rubbish behind. I left it to midday, then went outside and picked up all their rubbish which filled a bin bag. I figured they wouldn't do it so I would. I also decided to leave the bag full of dead fireworks right outside their front door, so they can't miss it when they leave their house. I mean OP just did everybody a good deed there. If not for everybody else, for OP. And I would argue 100% that leaving that bag on their doorstep is the right thing to do. It would have been even better if OP had to just walk right past their garbage bin to leave it on their doorstep. Our next story is, want me to mend your clothes? You want me to mend your clothes after bickering all night? Okay, so husband and I both came home last night, tired and very cranky. It was just one of those days. Unfortunately, this led to bickering, and before we knew it, we were in a full-blown petty argument over all the stupid small stuff that we find irritating about each other. You know, the kind of stuff that's usually not even worth fighting about. Anyway, of course, we fixed it after a good night's sleep, and just both of us taking some time to ourselves to cool down. Now, I always take a bit longer to cool down than husband, and he knows this, but sometimes likes to check in with me a little too early, while I'm still working through my emotions. Today, he messages me while he's at work, saying he's sorry about last night, but could I pretty please repair one of the pockets on his favorite jacket? I say sure, and nothing more, and then he follows up with, take your time, don't do it if you're still ticked, which actually irritates me even more. So I finished the repairs on his torn pocket, but also got it in my head to sneakily sew the other one of the pockets closed in such a way that he won't really notice unless he actively tries to stick his hand in it. I also went and sewed the wrist hole shut on a completely different sweater because I was feeling extra petty. He has yet to come home from work and see what I've done. Just imagining him like, ooh, I'm gonna finally wear this sweater, this looks nice. And they put it on and they just realize, why is my wrist hole shut? Our next story is, no peaches for you. One time at the Monterey Market in Berkeley, an oldish lady asks if she can cut in front of me, which would have been fine, but since there were people behind me, I didn't think it was fair to them, unless they all agreed to it, so I told her that. I guess she didn't want to ask the rest of the folks in my line, so she moves to another line and someone lets her cut in. As my stuff was being rung up, she passes by and says, I was going to let you come pick peaches in my house, and they're Babcocks. And I freaking love Babcock peaches. My only comfort was that I was pretty sure she was just saying that. At least I hope so. Babcocks. I think this is the first time I've ever actually heard about Babcock peaches. But I'm so sorry to hear about OP's heart shattering into a million pieces at finding out that they could have had their precious Babcocks. Our next story is Nike Air Max to Min. I used to work in a chain sports slash shoe store. The manager and assistant manager were both total jerks that took their crappy retail jobs way too seriously. The types that would find you the most random pointless job rather than you have a second to talk to your coworkers for a moment when the store was empty and all tasks completed. Or there was an expectation everyone stay back 30 minutes after the store closed to clean up, unpaid on minimum wage. Eventually handed in my notice, but before leaving, I worked my way through the stock room with a pin, letting all the air out of the Nikes. Was completely unnoticeable until someone tried them on. Place had enough turnover. It could have been anyone. Forgive me if this sounds ignorant, but do shoes have air in them usually? Like shoes with big soles or the very big heels that's mostly air? I mean, I guess I never really cared to find out the composition of a shoe like an Air Max. But if you told me that you could get revenge by letting air out of a Nike Air Max shoe, I don't think I would have believed you. Our next story is forced to buy drinks for my alcoholic dad. This is a short but definitely sweet story I remember from my childhood. During the summer, when I would be outside with friends during the days, my dad would always find the most annoying time to call me and demand that I return home and go buy him drinks usually vodka with coke or beers, so since I had no other choice but to do it, I would return home and go to the store to buy him the requested drinks. The store was about 10 minute walk from our home, 
but you best believe my walk back from it would always take 20 minutes, during which I would not stop shaking the freak out of these beers and coke the entire way back, making sure they tasted like absolute pee when he got them. Now, I totally understand if it's all fizzed out, it's not going to be very enjoyable, but does it actually affect the overall taste, like if they waited long enough or they let the fizz just fizz off and it's just the normal liquid? Like, does the overall actual quality at the end degrade if it's all shaken up? This next story is, keep using my email. I have an email address that I use for important things, like anything related to my car, banking, etc., About a year ago, I started receiving junk mail type emails, i.e. dick sporting goods newsletters and such. Not the email I'd use to sign up for BS newsletters and similar stuff, so I always just unsubscribed, figuring it's spammy emails. Well, I started getting more emails, particularly from a car dealership multiple states away from where I live. I was getting emails with information I don't think I should have had, like a new car's VIN number, along with thanks for purchasing your new car type emails. I called the dealership and told them to remove my email since someone gave them the wrong one and I shouldn't have all this info. They got it changed and I thought things were fine. Fast forward a couple of months and I started getting emails again. I've tried to call the dealership and send emails and I get no response from anyone anymore. Well, yesterday I got an email that said, thanks for your appointment, and click here to update anything. So I clicked it, and had the option to completely cancel the appointment. So I did. Maybe when they show up for their 7.30am appointment to find they cancelled it, they will realize they're not using their email and using mine. I'm just so sick of it, and I will continue to be a nuisance because this random person is being a nuisance to my inbox. I mean, if you tried every legitimate resource to get this changed around, I mean, you could probably go and try to track this person down, because you kind of have most of their info, I would assume, but it feels pretty creepy and also seems like a lot of effort for something that OP shouldn't have to do. At this point, if you try to warn OP plenty and it seems like they're continuing to make this mistake, they keep using your email for some stupid reason, what else can you do but try to like really get it through to them that there's something wrong going on here? This next story is, it's Christmas after all. My ex is a piece of garbage. I'm a clown who kept going back for seconds, thirds, fourths, etc. over the past five years. He tried to get back into my life a few months ago, went on a coffee date, had a serious talk, mostly him deflecting any accountability and me coming to terms that I just need to walk away for good. His mom and I still talk. I'm not in contact with him anymore and he doesn't know we talk. I'm finding out more and more about how much he mistreats his mom who he lives with. He's going to be getting a settlement check soon, as he does every five years, for about 50000 in which a few months ago, he told me he will be taking that check, getting a truck, and moving out of state since I won't be with him. His mom, tired of being mistreated, is praying he moves. Pretty much everyone wants him out of their hair, but I don't want him getting away scot-free. My revenge won't really hurt him as much as embarrass him, so as a parting gift, I ordered some male anatomy shaped valve covers to put on his new vehicle when he gets it, secretly. His mom is even clueless to my plan, but I do know she will tell me when he gets his vehicle. I also anonymously shipped a big chocolate male anatomy to him for his birthday which is in 3 days, as a subtle parting gift. He won't suspect me, we haven't spoken in a while now, and ended with no beef. Again, he also doesn't know I talk to and hang out with his mom. My only regret is, I just wish I could see his face when he opens that box. I made sure to get dark chocolate instead of white, since he's racist too and a white guy. I hope he eats it, just like he expected me to eat that box of chocolates that he stabbed several times and gave to me for Valentine's Day one year. I wish I could see his face the first time he has to air up a tire at some point and he's twisting a tiny male anatomy complete with balls and wondering if the truck came with these valve covers or how they possibly came to be there. Even more points if he takes his truck to have new tires put on by the time he discovers it. I could have bought some cool glow in the dark ones, but I picked the black ones so that they look like a normal valve cover from afar, meaning more time before he even discovers it. A guy like this probably isn't somebody that's going to be too on top of making sure that their truck's tires are totally inflated. Shoot, the best thing that could happen is they leave it until like they get their oil changed and they just go to one of those like ones where you pull in 
and the workers just do everything while you sit in the cab right there? Like imagine the workers are right there standing right outside the door, the windows roll down and they say, would you like us to fill up your tires? And that's when the discovery happens. Our next story is, I never thought it was such a bad little tree. When I was in elementary school, about the third grade, public school still allowed Christmas celebrations. Hallways were decorated, there were posters of Santa, reindeer, elves, etc. A real fun time to be a kid. Our class was thinking up plans on how to decorate. Since I lived next to a bunch of woods with lots of nice Christmas type trees, I volunteered to bring one in. I cut down one I thought was perfect. Maybe 7 foot tall and full like the standard tree we saw in ads. Dad drove me to school and helped me unload it from the trunk and my sticky gloved hands were coated in sap and those little needles. As I struggled to lug that giant down the hallway to the classroom, a big kid, the school's self-appointed arbiter of what was cool, was passing by and quipped, Hey Charlie Brown, where'd you get that crappy little tree? Incensed, I smacked him a broadside with the top of the tree as if it were a bat. His head, and now pink face, was dotted in tree sap and pine needles, and I made a gesture that I was about to do it again. He went on to the bathroom to wash it off. In the end, my classmates and I had a nice tree with our school-made decorations, and a great December as we counted down the days to vacation and Christmas. I mean, I'm just glad OP didn't get in trouble here because, like, what alibi do they really have as far as the bully having pine sap and needles on their face? Although I bet the bully wouldn't want to be caught dead looking like that anyways, they probably clean themselves off immediately. Our next story is, I was a fine upstanding citizen in a video game. This took place back when I was a teenager and so deep in the closet I was still trying to convince myself I liked boys. My boyfriend at the time, let's call him Kyle, always pestered me about playing Need for Speed with him. I like video games well enough and actually would play with him a lot, but racing games are not my thing. I told him as much, but he insisted I gave it a try. Fine, I decided to give it a go. Now, I'm the kind of gamer who plays for the sake of playing. If I win, great, but mostly I'm just looking to have a good time. Kyle was not on the same page. He could get really intense about his games. That's fine, but I get really annoyed whenever the person I play with starts bugging me about my performance. Kyle recommends I try a police chase game and I oblige. While I'm playing, he's doing these kind of jerking movements as he's following along, all the while giving me instructions in a sharp tone like our lives depend on it. Anytime I scrape a wall or go off course, he actually yells at me. I tell him to stop, but he actually ignores me and keeps shouting. As is often the way, the more he yells, the more mistakes I make, the more he yells, and so on. I play along best I can, but after a while, I've finally had enough. Right in the middle of the car chase with the police sirens getting louder, I stop the car abruptly, say nothing, just stop in the right lane and let go of the keyboard. Kyle actually sputters and does this kind of cartoonish double take between me and the screen in disbelief. What the heck are you doing? He shouts at me. I point at the screen and with my best poker face and my most innocent tone of voice, I just say, lights red. I shall remember the look on his face until the day I die. Strangely enough, he never asked me to play that game again. I thought OP was going to go the route of like, oh, I've had enough living this life of crime, I submit to the cops. You can't always just be on the run, Nathan, sometimes you gotta know when to fold them. Our next story is menswear meltdown. Back in the dark ages, I worked in a department store for extra cash. At the age of 15, I was gormless and used to not standing up for myself, particularly against adults. At summer sale time in the holidays, I was horrified at being moved from haberdashery to menswear. Sure enough, I had to endure five full days of men wending their way to me with foolish smiles, asking to be measured for underpants. If I had been given a pound for every request for personal application of a tape measure, I wouldn't be a millionaire, but I would be a wealthy woman nonetheless. At close of business on the last day, yet one more grinning numpty turned up, clutching bargain underwear to his chest. He asked what size I thought he was, and I cracked. I assured him that he looked like a small. He headed to the tills with his tiny tail between his legs. You know, I'm no genius, but I don't think Opie's referring to the kind of tail that you would classically think of. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.